welcome to this fourth lecture in the Gandhi Matters series organized jointly by the Raza Foundation and India International Center. Um, but for the reason that I am sitting here, uh, that is Ashok Bajpayee has taken ill, so but for that reason I am really happy that I am sitting on Tridit's left and in a position to say a few words about him, which for an audience like this is actually redundant, but I've known him for so long and admired him exceedingly. I'm an abashed, unabashed admirer of Tridip's, so I must say a few words, especially about his first incarnation as a scholar, uh, which has especially equipped him to understand Gandhi the way he does. Uh, before he got interested in Gandhi, Tridip had been working on late 19th century Gujarat, which actually paved the way in many ways for Gandhi. And you, you do have intimations of Gandhi during uh, that period, Gujarat and India of late 19th century. So I first met Tridip when he was working on late 19th century Gujarat, and since then I have been admiring him. He has a remarkable book called Writing Lives, where he discusses the lives and works of three eminent Gujarati literators, Narmad Govardhan Ram Tripathi and Manilal Nabhubai Dvedi. All extraordinary people, extraordinary writers. And then he moved on to Gandhi, and uh, I think I'm not exaggerating when I say that few scholars in our country, or few individuals, why only in our country at the moment, have immersed themselves in Gandhi the way Tridip has. And what I really admire about Tridip is his ability to be non judgmental, to understand, comprehend. <coughs> but not be in a haste to pass any judgments. And that makes it possible for Tridip to understand Tagore with as much empathy as he can understand Gandhi, which not many scholars find it possible to do. So it's a pleasure for me to welcome Tridip. And uh, in two works, beginning with Hind Swaraj and now the autobiography, uh, first in collaboration with Suresh Sharma and this time by himself, he's tried to read Gandhi in two languages, two tongues, as he says. First Hind Swaraj and now the autobiography. Uh, you will soon see what level of scholarship Tridip possesses and how imaginatively he reads Gandhi, Tridip. Thank you, Sudhir Sahib. Um, deeply touched. Thank you. Um, some Gujaratis lose their voice when they come to Delhi. Um, um, we shouldn't get our hopes high for that reason. Uh, um, but um, so I'll. I'll um, plod along. Um, <coughs> it's a very beautiful phrase um, which is less and less employed, perhaps less and less remembered, um, to understand and describe both the process of the translation and the duties of a translator. And the word that I, or the phrase that I grew up with, um, was neither Tarzuma nor Anuad, uh, nor certainly not translation, uh, was a very strange term called Parakaya Pravesh, um, entering the body of the other. And that really was uh, said to be both the act of translation 
and the duty of a translator. Now, um, if you um, if you suspend this belief for a while, and and not ask yourself difficult questions like, can one enter the body of the other? What body are we talking about? Is the body of the author and the same as the body of the text? Um, um, uh, all of that. Right? But we know that it's possible to imagine that as an ideal, as as the is the true measure of things by which. Um, one's relationship to the text and to that author could be imagined is that the translator somehow is able to move herself or himself into the body of the text make it her own his own or enter the life of the author so what's the relationship between the translator and the author the translator and the intimacy with which he or she understands, grapples with, comes to inhabit a text. And that's really what I wish to talk about uh, at some point during this evening. Um, before we come to that, we should remember, and, and we, um, some of us remember, we keep forgetting, that Gandhi also saw himself as a translator. Gandhi, in fact, was a very, very fine translator of text. Uh, he understood the, the power of translation, uh, the transformative power of translation, and also the capacity of translation to create and imbue with meanings. Uh, one translation that stayed with him all his life was the translation of the Bhagavad Gita by Sir Edwin Arnold. And every time he had to quote the text in English, he preferred to use that translation. And we know that his first encounter with the Gita is really through Sir Edwin's translation. And those two verses, verse 62 and 63 of the second discourse, is really what starts a journey of this deep engagement with the Bhagavad Gita. So he knows what, what, what translations can do. Uh, of course, he translated himself in, 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 uh, in case of uh, Hind Swaraj, which is when uh, that is the only text of his own uh, which he sought to translate uh, and render it into English. But apart from that, he had done an amazing translation of Unto This Last and transformed the text completely just by <coughs> what he does with the title. Now, the word Unto This Last, which comes, as we know, from the parable of the vineyard, uh, would suggest itself both in Hindustani and in Gujarati as Antyodai. And it's not a term that he does not use. He uses that term. What does he do with it? He translates Antyodai or unto this last not as Antyodai but as Sarvodai. Um, and, 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 and just by this act of reimagining both the philosophical ground from which uh, unto this last emerged or the kind of need that the text had both in his life and the life of this country or its people we realize from the way he translates um, unto this last the servo there. We also know that he translated Plato's Apology, um, The Life of Socrates. Um, and what we don't remember uh, or we remember less and less now that he translated poetry. He translated in prose um, in English prose, the entire um, 192 verses of the um, Ashram Bajnavli. It's a, it's a prose translation, beautifully rendered prose translation, uh, makes no attempt to stick to a meter. Sometimes there are flourishes of, of, of that kind of a thing, but he does that and he thought that his most important work, philosophical work, was the Gujarati translation of the Bhagavad Gita, which we should we should remember uh, is is actually published the day he sets off from the ashram uh, for Dandi. But that was the text that he translated while he was writing the autobiography. So Gandhi understands what this act of translation is and what translations could do, uh, ought to do. Uh, he makes certain claims about his own acts of translation uh, that he does not make for anything else. For example, he says that I do not know of any author when he translates the Bhagavad Gita 
as I do not know of any author having made a claim that this translation is backed by 30 years of practice. So the relationship between self-practice and ability of a translator to engage with the text and therefore render the text in a different universe of meaning, of conduct, is something that he knows. Um, he does not make a claim of that nature. He does make that claim about Hinswaraj saying, I have written an original book. Uh, that was the only statement of originality that he would ever, he would ever make. But with the translation of the Bhagavad Gita, he says, I, I submit this to the readers that they should read this translation over all other translations in Gujarati language because I know of no author having made. So does he expect, is his expectation from his translators similar? That's one kind of a question. Uh, we know that um, the preferred translator for Gandhi's books was not Mahadev Desai, was Valji Govindji Desai. Uh, Valji Govindji had translated uh, Save the Autobiography and Key to Health, all other books or books uh, which came out as books during Gandhi's lifetime. Uh, and rendered them into English, which included very important works like the Satyagraha in South Africa, but for me far more important uh, those letters that he wrote from the prison, um, which had to be read out every Tuesday morning in the ashram called Mangal Prabhat, uh, rendered in English as from Yaravda Mandir, which is actually Gandhi's only long meditation on the ashram observances. That's the time when he actually sat down and explained to the Ashramites what he meant by each term <coughs> and what conduct was expected uh, of, of the Ashram community in that sense. So Valji Govindji Desai is the translator. He also rendered uh, Ashram Observances in Action, which was Gandhi's attempt to write the history of the Satyagraha Ashram. Uh, he rendered uh, into English uh, <coughs> Gandhi's work on the constructive um, uh, programs. But then there is Mahadev. Um, uh, 1917 is when he met um, Gandhi. Before that, um, he had been trained in philosophy and in law. Um, and like a lot of struggling lawyers, um, he made um, he worked as a translator uh, in the Oriental Translator's office um, uh, in, in, in Bombay. Um, he had learned the craft of translations there, but more, more importantly than that, he was the person who introduced Tagore to Gujarat and Gujarati before he had met Gandhi, because um, in, the, in the popular <coughs> folklore of Gujarat, uh, we like uh, we like to think that Tagore is actually introduced to Gujarat because of his association with Gandhi. But the three important books uh, um, um, Mahadev had translated before 1917, which included um, um, Prachin Sahitya. Um, so he had he had worked on on, on Tagore, and and Gandhi and 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 Mahadev's first long conversation was about translation. Um, Mahadev's friend and, and colleague um, Narhari Parikh had already joined the ashram. He had joined as a teacher in the Rashtriya Shara or what then later became the ashram school. Um, and, and Mahadev drawn by both the figure of, of Gandhi and also the life of the ashram went to see him. Um, and that's when um, Gandhi wanted a statement translated and every teacher, every bilingual teacher uh, in English and Gujarati was given the statement that he had drafted about a situation in Kheda um, and Mahadev translated that and Gandhi and, 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 and Mahadev engaged in a long discussion about the act of translation and why Mahadev's translation was more closer to the intent that Gandhi had. Um, and that's when, which leads to this lifelong 
relationship um, which would only end on 15th August 1942. Um, um, a remarkable life uh, and remarkable engagement. When Gandhi decided to write the autobiography, as we know, uh, in um, <coughs> sometime in November of 1925, um, um, when he began to write the autobiography, um, Gandhi imposed um, certain notions of self-practice on himself. Uh, and one of the most important of those was that um, it required him to dwell within the ashram. Um, Gandhi famously took sabbatical from all his activities um, uh, to write the autobiography. Within a week, Gandhi, uh, and this is what I think it's important for the people of Ahmedabad to understand, that Gandhi always made the distinction between Ahmedabad and ashram. And these were not coterminous in his mind. Um, um, so Gandhi said, said I, he says, when I said I will not travel out of the ashram, that includes Ahmedabad. I would dwell within the ashramic space, and the ashramic space was extended to include occasionally, once a week, the Gujarat Vidyapit, which was at the distance of about three and a half kilometers, to which he bicycled quite often. <coughs> One form of indwelling was within the ashram. The other form of indwelling was within the Gujarati language. He chose to write this in Gujarati. I don't think that there was any discussion, debate that he had as to the language of the translate uh, of the autobiography. And we'll come to that question later. The third uh, thing that he does while he reflects on his life uh, is actually to also meditate upon the Bhagavad Gita. And it is at that point the translation of the Bhagavad Gita began, um, which got completed much later, but the large body of the translation was completed as he wrote the autobiography. But more importantly for the ashram community was that every morning while he stayed at the ashram, he gave these 282 discourses on the Bhagavad Gita at the ashram. So each morning, Gandhi reads a verse, translates it for the ashramic community, explains it um, both in terms of its um, semantic universe, but also the conduct that is required of those who wish to make the Gita as their guide. Um, or as he called it, a moral dictionary. So there is the Bhagavad Gita, the ashram, Gujarati language, and the other text which was very close to him uh, was to meditate upon and think about the life of Christ, um, uh, and, and uh, which was the Sermon on the Mount. And he had hoped that every Saturday he would actually go to the Gujarat Vidyapit at the request of the students of Vidyapit and lecture on the sermon. Um, one of the great crimes that my, my city commit, has committed, and it has committed many, uh, but I think one, among the, the greatest crimes that we have committed is to not allow Gandhi to teach to his own community of students um, the sermon. There was only one lecture after which the Vidyapit community and the city of Ahmedabad said, this is not what we can tolerate you are proselytizing, you are converting, and there was this very, very long essay, very beautiful essay that Gandhi wrote, which was called, uh, which was called Crime of Reading the Bible, um, um, and, and, and the lecture stopped. But the idea really was that he would, you know, so the, these are four things around which Gandhi began to reflect and write the autobiography. Um, every week, <coughs> one installment would be written and published in Navjeevan, and simultaneously, uh, because it would be translated in English by Mahadev and published in Young India. And for the entire duration of the period that he wrote substantial part of the autobiography, Gandhi continued to dwell within the ashram. Um, of the 1520 days that he spent at the ashram, between 1917 and 1930, 685 days are spent while he's writing the autobiography. So autobiography is largely written sitting inside 
the ashram dwelling within the ashram. And there are other forms of indwelling that one would come to. Mahadev um, wrote this remarkable diaries, um, which um, are unfortunately not available to those who don't read Gujarati. Um, 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 some are available in Hindustani, some are available in English, uh, but the entire range of 22, 23 volumes in Gujarati is not something which is available. Also in Gujarati, the project remains incomplete. The last three years of diaries, even in Gujarati, are not in the public domain. And he wrote every day that he spent with Gandhi, which means the day that he was not with Gandhi is not recorded therein. Um, one of the great absences there is any mention of the autobiography. If there was a discussion that took place between him and Gandhiji about the act of translation, the choice of the translator, how they would go about it, who would see it, there is no mention of it. Um, so we don't know, and, and nor does Gandhi ever mention this. So neither Gandhi nor Mahadev, both great chroniclers of their own lives, uh, and Mahadev even a more detailed chronicler of Gandhi's life, uh, would never forget to mention um, Every enema that was given and administered uh, does not mention uh, the act of the autobiography at all. Um, we don't know from, and then nobody else in the Ashramic community mentions if what happened. We have to go by the stray remarks that Mahadev made um, in this very brief translator's note that the only other person pouring over his shoulders was Mira, Madeline Slade, uh, and, and, and she is credited with, uh, you know, sometimes glancing over, uh, glancing through the translations. Um, Pyarelal, we know, was involved in the later parts, while Mahadev is at, at Bardoli writing the report of the Bardoli Inquiry Commission. Uh, but we don't know if Gandhi and Mahadev spoke about the act of translation. Um, from se some letters of, of, of Gandhi, we know that they did discuss the translation, uh, certain words. Um, there is this very famous uh, exchange that took place between Raman and Chatterjee and, and, and Gandhi about the use of the word volatile uh, for Sister um, Nivedita. And the word in Gujarati was tej. Um, and, 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 and Gandhi, Gandhi and, 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 you know, and there, there's, a, there's a mention of splendor, she's being surrounded by splendor. And, and um, so they were, you know, Sister Nivedita's um, friends and colleagues uh, found both the description of splendor and the use of the word volatile objectionable. To, to which Gandhi responded to say, well, you know, Mahadev gave me three words. And, and um, both of us preferred the word, the term volatile. So we know that there was, um, if not on every, in, not in every instance, but there was close collaboration between Gandhi and, and, um, and Mahadev uh, that takes place. What drew my attention to the Gujarati text and the English text and the need to read them together was... Um, very early on um, in my life, um, when I began to read the English translation, having read the Gujarati original, I was struck by the term maker that occurs only once in the English rendering. Uh, it's a very beautiful passage where, um, where Gandhi says, um, what is communicable, what is not communicable? Uh, does, does one in an, act, in an autobiographical act communicate everything about oneself to others? Are there things which are known only to yourself? Right? Um, and, and, and Mahadev rendered it very beautifully in English uh, and to say, um, 
There are some things which are known only to oneself and one's maker. These are clearly incommunicable. Now, the question um, that I asked myself, does, that Gan does Gandhi have a notion of God who makes? Okay. Um, and I shouldn't have struggled too much. I should have just opened the Gujarati text and started reading the Gujarati text as uh, any sensible person would do. And then you realize that these things occur in the act of translation. And the Gujarati rendering is, you know, Gujarati is very different because there is no mention of God. There is no mention of something, an agency or a being that lies outside of one or, or, or has the capacity to make one. And Gujarati and Saab will, uh, will appreciate this. He says, Evi kitlik vastuo avashyak che, che atma je jane che, atma ma je shami jai che. Which I have rendered as, there are certainly some things which arise and find repose in the soul. It is beyond my capacity to write about them. In my experiment, the spiritual is moral, religion is morality, morality observed from the perspective of the soul is religion. But there is no, there was no notion of the maker that was available here. And once, if one were to introduce the idea of maker into the act of the autobiography, it would create very large issues about reading the autobiography, one felt. Because much later, in part four, Suddenly, while he is trying to write about his European friends, Gandhi goes off onto a tangent. And he starts writing as to how he writes the autobiography. Where he that he is moved by this Antaryami, the dweller within. Now, the dweller within is not the maker. Um, um, <coughs> which Madhav has rendered as spirit. Um, so one realized that one, one needed to, to pay much closer attention to the text of Gujarati and of English and having um, learned from looking at Hinswaraj and what had happened to various editions of Hinswaraj, one also realized that it was a possible, possible that in later Gujarati editions, things that had found their way into English got back somehow incorporated in Gujarati. So it was necessary to read both these texts uh, placed side by side um, and read them together. Uh, mark out the changes that occur in the act of translation both ways. Because things that are added which they find uh, in the English translation which sometimes find their way into later editions um, and, and there are no mentions made as to how these things are done, who's done them. Um, my, I, have, I have great suspicion, and it is only suspicion, but I, having seen enough of these documents, I think it's not unfounded that it was Kaka Sahib Kalelkar who was happily uh, changing text. Um, and he was given to doing these things without, um, 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 without too much of... Uh, concern about these things. Uh, uh, he's done that with the Ashram Bhajnavali. Now we realize that it has happened with the, uh, uh, with the translation of the Bhagavad Gita because we're trying to now see where his hand has moved uh, and which text we need to, to, to restore in some, some ways. So clearly um, at some point Kaka Sahib, uh, we know that in 1948 he was fiddling with the autobiography uh, and getting Amritlal Nanavati to to uh, 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 getting Mnavajivan uh, to commission another translation of the Hindi autobiography, at the same time commissioning a new translation of um, Hind Swaraj, uh, the Amritlal Nanavati translation. There was already a translation in Hindi of the autobiography. There is another one which occurs in 1948. So that's another story, the Hindi story. But this idea of the maker, the Antaryami, things which, was, which arise in the Atma, and find repose in the Atma got me uh, into making these kinds of notes. Um, eventually I ended up making uh, far too many notes. Um, 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 uh, 
um, I shouldn't. I mean, I've. Uh, I thought I needed to be more sparse. But let me let me give you some instances as to what kind of notes and what kind of readings um, we do. Now, um, not all of that would be intelligible to all of you, but please bear with me. Some of it will be uh, very, very. Um, you know, um, things occur in the act of translation. Um, sometimes Mahadev or the translator um, wants to be more charitable, um, um, wants to, to provide a certain kind of gloss to, to things. But, um, so when Gandhi mentions only the father, uh, Mahadev would translate that, not the father, but he would want to include the mother and say parents. Um, those things would occur. Uh, also happens that um, he ref Gandhiji refers to Ba as Kasturbai, to large part of the text till she becomes ba yeah, or her his form of address for her changes and Mahadev does not really know whether he should be calling her bai or ba so um, the text very interestingly uh, there are places where ba, kastur is called kastur bai uh, in english and other places where he uh, she is called kastur ba uh, uh, even before gandhi had adopted that form but it, um, Gandhi's Gujarati um, in the autobiography is not what Vinoba would have called crude. As you know, as some of you know, uh, Vinoba called Gandhi's Gujarati of uh, the Hinswaraj crude. Um, very, very interesting formulation that he had and he uses the word crude uh, to describe Gandhi's Gujarati in Hinswaraj. This Gujarati is not that. This Gujarati is the reputation that we have of Gandhi's Gujarati, the kind of limpid prose that there is, the sparseness of, of expression, uh, the e great economy with which he would, he would write, but also um, a great ear for the cadence of words. Now, the, tr the, the, the real challenge there is how do you capture the cadence of Gujarati terms, which Mahadev does most of times, but uh, in some instances, it's just far, uh, impossible. Uh, in, 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 in this, in this um, um, one line, Gandhi uses the word bhakti twice. Hmm? Describes himself both as Pitru Bhakt and Vishay Bhakt. Um, uh, devoted to the father is also devoted to the passions right? and, and, and um, now so those kinds of things one felt needed to be marked out uh, is to bring a reader of the English text uh, at least give the reader an access to the to the kind of cadence that Gandhi's Gujarati begins to acquire um, and 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 uh, so some of that um, of course, you know, um, there, is this, there is also um, this thing that um, a lot of people have said that uh, when you read the, the autobiography in English, um, it's a guilt-ridden text. Uh, while in Gujarati, the sense of guilt appears much less. It's a far more easy relationship that Gandhi seems to have with himself, with his parents, with his own passions. While in, good, in, in English, um, um, there is, um, the man seems to be weighed down by, by guilt. And then we read much more into it and we thought it was not just guilt, it was also Christian guilt. Um, and this idea of a Christian guilt came very interestingly because in 1939, a revised edition of the autobiography was published. And Gandhi um, and, and, and Mahadev withheld the name of the person who had helped him make revisions and used the word an eminent English scholar. Yeah. Which everybody assumed, I mean, and, and everybody started ascribing their favorite English men or English women, uh, and all of them either happened to be devout Christians or lapsed clergy. And, and so our, our reading. But what happens interestingly is that Mahadev introduces, or the English translation introduces a sense of language which clearly is 
coming in some measure from both Gandhi's reading of the Bible and Mahadev's study of the Bible. I will give uh, an example where the translation soars. Uh, I have not read, said, seen anybody come anywhere close to, to just one line leaping through an entire text the way Mahadev manages to do. But for example, this very famous chapter where Gandhi talks about his shame. His shame of being with Kastur who is pregnant while the father lay dying. And in English, as you know, the, trans the chapter is called My Double Shame. Now in Gujarati there is no notion of double. And as Gujaratis we know when things double. So it's called Mari Namoshi. It's, it's not Mari Bevdi Namoshi. It's, it's much later in the text somewhere that Gandhi spoke of that you know both these things coming together created a f something that weighed me down. So these, uh, so so this sense that sometimes we have of of things soaring uh, or, or being weighed down. Um, I just want to give very quickly one example. Um, you know, um, the text, as you know, is replete with uh, idiomatic Gujarati. There are, you know, muhavras and kahavats which are constantly used to the text. Or um, um, it refers to large number of Gujarati poetry. Um, I mean, this idea that Gandhi had no sense of poetry, um, um, I don't know where it comes from, but it, 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 sta it stayed with us. But uh, uh, if you read the text closely, phrases which are picked up and without necessarily, not necessarily marked, are from the Gujarati poetic tradition. So there would be Shamar there and there would be, so in, in, in very famous uh, uh, <coughs> lines of Shamar, rendered so beautifully but so non-Gujarati like uh, 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 or non, um, uh, yeah, non-Shamar like. It says, Pani apne pai bhalu bhojan to DJ. If somebody gives you a glass of water, do give them a full meal. Badly translated. Avi namave shish dandvat kode kije. If somebody comes and bows before you, go completely prostrate and, 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 and or, or go um, bow even further. And Mahadev, um, and I, I don't know whether this was Mahadev's rendering or whether Gandhi had a hand in this. Uh, I think this is. Um, uh, I don't know. I think this is a work of both of them working together. It said, for a bowl of water, give a godly meal. For a kindly greeting bow, thou down with zeal. For a simple penny, pay thou back with gold. If thy life be rescued, life do not withhold. So, uh, so uh, for me, um, uh, while doing this, really was uh, one... Uh, um, one thing, uh, one little pleasure that I um, uh, gave myself was to try and find in Gujarati, Gandhi's Gujarati, phrases, terms, which are which come from the long Gujarati literary tradition that he's an heir to and he knows rather well. Um, let me um, not dwell on that. Um, The idea of being civilized. Now, you know, um, you, we all remember Gandhi's attempts to be an Englishman, um, um, uh, rather well done, and 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 and, and, and described with some some great sense of um, detachment uh, and and humor as to how he played. But in um, in Gujarati, there is no notion of being an Englishman. It is the idea of being civilized, which is, as we now know, not necessarily coterminous, because um, <laughs> no, I mean, um, you know, we've, we've come a long way, Shahid Bhai. I mean, look at my. Um, is this joke? But atli tapti paj bas na hoti. Ekla sabhya poshakti thodu sabhya thavaishe. 
would only civilized clothes make you civilized? Sabhyata na bija ketlak bahiya guno pan jani lita hata. So through the paragraph, which is rendered in English as playing the Englishman, there is no mention of being English. The only mention there is, is of acquiring French. Because Gandhi says that what I need to do is to acquire more than a smattering of French, which, which he had begun to acquire in any case um, um, at the inn. Um, so there are these... Um, 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 there are these things which happen, um, um, and I think they are important to to mark when you when you read um, or wish to read text um, differently. Um, ah. Now, you know, when I said that um, this one instance, um, Gandhi is talking. Um, about how God has saved him, where everything else for seemed to have forsaken him, God saved him, and God saved him from committing um, the sin of submitting to carnal lust while he is with, or he is taken to a prostitute. And in Gujarati, he writes very simply, matter of fact, without any reference. I mean, there is a reference to God, but when he's writing that, there is no theological reference or literary reference that he has, and, and, and it's very simple. Jare badi asha chodi ne besie, when we give up all hope, banne haath hetha pade, when we both our hands fall down, Literally, tare kyaak ne kyaak thi madad avi pade chhe, eu me anu bhavi chhe. It has been my experience that at such point, help comes from somewhere. Okay. Now, um, and could have been rendered as prosaically as I as I did. What Mahadev does is is an act of, I think, one of the greatest acts of translation um, that I have read. Um, and he says, what he does is, he translates it, the entire passage, by just one line that he takes from a great poem. And he, he renders the entire thing, says, when other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless or oh, abide with me. So this great poem of of Henry Francis Light, abide with me. So Gandhi, um, so so uh, when you actually read, uh, so this idea that this text becomes imbued with a certain different kind of universe is not all that absent, uh, but it certainly source is not necessarily um, um, coming from um, the revised edition. It is in the first edition itself, um, and and clearly clearly shows uh, uh, the kind of reading that both Gandhi was, Gandhi had done. Uh, Gandhi, of course, this is something Gandhi knew, but also Mahadev had acquired in the process. And I think this, uh, this is one great, I mean, one reason that I think I would never translate or retranslate the autobiography in English in modern prose is this one phrase. That, uh, I think, settled the argument for me for all times, at least in my instance, that if somebody who had, you know, capacity to soar and lift a text up to that level of of clarity and 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 and, and create references where that reference is not available, but certainly available to the author and intended in the text, uh, one shouldn't really try and meddle with it. All that one can do is to be in the hashia, be in the margins, and I am I'm glad to have been able to do that. Um, I don't want to read too much of, of these. I've marked more pa passages. Um, <coughs> just one, probably. Um, and of course, sometimes um, it's not all that pleasing. Um, um, or it's certainly not um, not one would expect um, Mahadev to do. Um, 
uh, Gandhi is talking about the kind of Indians who had gone to South Africa um, and and their capacities uh, of the indentured labor to 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 acquire you know once they become free uh, from indenture what kind of life they could lead uh, and the relationship between the colonial born Indians and the coolies uh, or, or the f those who had freed themselves um, and in Gujarati um, um, it's a very Gujarati phrase or maybe it's not very Gujarati it's also there probably in, it is there in Hindustani but the idea that you could go um, and create wealth out of nothing which is a great Gujarati dream to create wealth out of nothing um, um, I mean uh, you anybody can create wealth out of something right? I mean even Bengalis can do that but um, um, I mean only Gujaratis aspire to create wealth out of nothing so in Gujarati it says jangal ma mangal karishake dhulma thi dhan karishake eva hindi ho tiyan jai vasya hot to temno itihas judo jhot to jungle mein mangal kar sake aur dhool mein se dhan bana sake dhan bana sake aise gujarati wahan pe gaye hote to itihas kuch alag hi hota mahadev i don't know what happens what overcame him he says and and, and this is what he does and but, but it it makes sense in that register but um, it's not um, uh, it's not what he uh, uh, would i mean i don't think he would have been very proud to read this again um, if those who went there had all been Robinson Crusoe's. <laughs> right? Um, um, so, I mean, uh, so, so when, you, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you read these two texts together, um, you get, um, um, you get uh, utter, utter delight uh, 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 and, and, and great education. Um, but uh, let me go back to this question that I started with of Parakaya Pravesh. Um, what is really happening here? Um, I mean, um, we know that they could have collaborated and all of that, and Gandhi would have read, you know, Gandhi was not about to let go of um, the translation, this, that, and the other. We also know now, um, um, because there is records available, of the kind of self-practice that Gandhi did while he wrote the autobiography, the kind of indwelling that he said was necessary. First in the ashram, physically within the ashram, or spiritually within the ashram, in the language of Gujarati, uh, meditating upon the two texts which he thought were moral guides for him, uh, the Gita on one hand and the Sermon on the other, translating both um, 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 Gandhi, um, um, you know, if if the uh, lectures had taken place, the lectures would have been in Gujarati and therefore he would have rendered um, parts of the sermon in, in, in Gujarati, which were later done by Swami Anand, um, you know, very, very amazingly uh, um, translated uh, in Gujarati. So we know something of Gandhi's self-practice, his need to dwell within, uh, to be guided by the Antaryami, the act of fasting that preceded um, the act of writing the autobiography, because as you uh, probably know, uh, this um, the day he began to write the autobiography is also the day that he began to fast for um, self-purification or purification of the ashramic community. So we have, uh, we have, we are able to, to, to understand and enter Gandhi's self-practices, but we are, are completely unable to understand what self-practices Gandhi Mahadev brought. Uh, what preparedness uh, or wo what practice did Mahadev do while he is translating? Apart from the fact that he's, um, he's ever present by Gandhi's side um, if they are together, um, that he's listening to every word that Gandhi speaks, he's writing it down in verbatim almost uh, in the diaries. <coughs> is that the preparation? Is, is being Gandhi's almost um, shadowing Gandhi uh, in all waking hours and then going back and, 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 and translating um, you know, 
things that Gandhi had done during the day, uh, making copies of correspondence. Uh, is that the preparation? Or did Mahadev go through another kinds of preparation? My sense, having um, thought about it, uh, I have not written about it. I have just alluded to it. But I think what um, my I think Mahadev has the kind of access to Gandhi's Antaryami that is unprecedented for any translator. And I'm saying not Gandhi's text, the working of Gandhi's inner voice. If anybody had um, a sense of where this inner voice might take Gandhi or might tell Gandhi something, Although we know that not in every instance does even Mahadev know uh, the working of Antaryami, otherwise it would not be Antaryami and it would not be Gandhi's Antaryami. So I'm not saying that there is complete excess, I'm not even suggesting that because we know in this very famous instance that both Sudhir Sahib and I will hopefully write two different uh, and two difficult books uh, is the Great Fast of 1933 where Gandhi says, um, and, and, and Mahadev is with him, so is Sadar Patel. Now, Sadar Patel you can excuse. Um, he was not given to find the sentiments. Um, 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 uh, but Mahadev... Um, uh, but Mahadev has no excess, Gandhi says. Nobody knew, as Gandhi uses the word, that a tempest was raging within me. So it's, I'm not suggesting that Mahadev had excess... You know, there was this no, um, um, or, or that Mahadev had a prefiguration of what Gandhi is going to go through. N none of that I'm suggesting. But I think the kind of transparency with which Gandhi presented himself to Mahadev, the complete and absolute devotion with which, and it's, it's, not, it's not a devotion of the unquestioning. I think it's the devotion that arises uh, where you are able to ask fundamental questions to your master and, and tell the master that you have to rise above yourself because I expect you to be my master. Be worthy to be my master. And that's the great devotion that Mahadev has. Mahadev, Gandhi rises in that relationship. Uh, and I think that's really what Mahadev is able to bring to that relationship. Um, What is also very, very clear is that if you had no access to the Gujarati, and anyone, I'm not suggesting that everybody must have access to Gujarati. Uh, if you were to read the English um, and, and, and even read Hindi um, and read two versions or three translations in Hindi, uh, which I've <coughs> read, uh, and, and read it in Marathi um, um, and other languages, the autobiography in English, the reputation of Gandhi's autobiography or Gandhi's writing or Gandhi's life rests largely upon the English text and it's filled with light. I mean, I don't know any other word to describe the experience of reading that text. Uh, it is imbued with light and that's not the sense that I get when I read the Gujarati. I, 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 it's a very beautiful account very moving, written with great, um, uh, great prose. Um, uh, but is that filled with light? No. The Gujarati text, I'm sorry, well, not sorry, Gujarati text has never filled me with light. It's always the English text, but in the moments of darkness, and if you want to, if I want to, to find, um, it's the, it's that, now, I don't think that that is only Gandhi's light. Mahadev's light is very much part of that, of that experience that I have. Thank you. Friends.
Any comments, questions, or observations, please? more about the 1933, uh, his fast. He gave no reasons, uh, the 21-day fast. Well, I'm, to be very brief, um, we know that it was um, before that fast happens, there is another fast, uh, which is the, which probably is the most unjust act of fasting done by Gandhi or by anybody else perhaps, uh, which is the fast which creates a moral dilemma for Dr. Ambedkar. And some months later, um, Gandhi embarks upon what both of us feel. Um, and I am, you know, um, I'm not saying because, because we've thought about this and talked about this repeatedly over the last decades is Gandhi's purest fast um, where he says there's nothing external I need to cleanse myself uh, and I, I shall do so by this act of fasting now we can go into the motives thereof see whether <coughs> it was a form of atonement um, what did he need to cleanse himself for it had it something to do with the previous fast? Uh, was something else happening in his life that we have no access to? Uh, was the ashram falling apart? Of course it was falling apart. It had fallen apart in 1928. So it was not something that, um, um, you know, um, with the death of uh, <coughs> Maganlal, it had begun to crumble. So it was not necessarily... So it's not external. Um, um, and this fast really is something which... Um, uh, which happens uh, through himself um, and and uh, we have also accounts of that fast uh, left to us both by Pyarelal um, and by Mahadev apart from Gandhi's own reflections on the fast after the act of fasting when he uh, when he was released uh, after the fast and, and, and went to live first at Parnakuti in Pune and then um, in Juhu, in Bombay. So that's briefly what happens. Um, and he announces the fast to, to Mahadev and to, to Sardar Patel, who completely gobsmacked. They had no idea that this was coming. And Gandhi says for days preceding that decision, he had been uneasy. Uh, and, he, and he uses the word, a tempest was raging within me. I mean, and, and Gandhi is not given to using... Um, using that phrase and that's the phrase that he used because that that particular note was written in English uh, it's not even an act of Not, not, not the 33 fast. Not the 33. Otherwise, the, the boys 20, and girls. 21-day fast. No, no, not, no, no, not that fast. Otherwise, the boys and girls in the ashram were having what is called good time was being had. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I mean, <laughs> and, and and periodically it created problems for Gandhi and Gandhi um, um, fasted, did disciplinary acts, all kinds of things happened, but not in this instance. Yeah, please. Um, I wanted to ask, so as you have demonstrated, um, the idioms in the language in which the original is being translated sometimes work, sometimes don't work. And so where is, you need to find the balance, the translator needs to find that balance. So with Mahadev, I mean with the English it was uh, perhaps easier for, you know, because Gandhi was there, he was with him and you know they could discuss. So, Bhagavad <coughs> has been translated to several other languages, including Indian. So, how much of a reference uh, did the other translators for the other languages have uh, took to Gandhi, and uh, how much access did they have to him uh, to be able to actually do the entire translation of the autobiography? And, uh, 
and which other uh, translation in another language for the view of what you have heard or read or known uh, is, is good, is also comes close to, uh, you know, as close to the uh, original in the sense of authenticity. No, it should have been Hindi. I'm saying it should have been Hindi. But it, um, for some, and the reasons I don't know, I've not been able to figure it out, but I, you know, give me two years and probably if Navjivan agrees, we will uh, be able to go back. But um, um, while, Gan while uh, um, Hindi translation follows the Gujarati thing, uh, <coughs> Mahavir Prasad Poddar does the Hindi translation, which is still available um, from Sastu Sahitya Mandar. Something happens in 1948 and Kaka Sahib and Navjivan decide to commission another translation, which is Kashina Trivedi's translation, which is what we read, which is what Navjivan publishes. Navjivan doesn't publish Sastu, Sahitya Mandal, and you know, so there is no conversation there. And in the Sampuna Vangmai, which is the Hindi edition of the collected works, so the Hindi collected works, there is a version which is neither this nor that. And as it quite always happens, when you commit a crime, you don't mention who's committed the crime. Uh, so the name of the translator of that text, or somebody who's really, is not available. So they don't tell us which translation they're using. The Hindi tr Kashina Trivedi's translation is bad. Period. I mean, right? Um, but it's better than Mahavir Prasad Potars. Knowing him. Knowing him. Right? And the Sampuna Vangmai one is an unreadable one. Right? So, you know, and, and, and you know, Kashina Trivedi, of course, had did not have to have access to the mediated access to the English. He had direct access. Uh, I presume um, Mahavi Prasad Poddar did not have direct access to the Gujarati in the same way as Kashinath Trivedi did. And those editors of Sampurna Vangmai, I don't know who, who did that, uh, but they're clearly not uh, done through, you know. So probably they've looked at the two existing ones, the English one. Um, so I don't know, right? The Marathi one that I, I sometimes read, uh, I don't read Marathi very well, but I, you know, since it's in the Nagri script, one can you know, keep going back to it. Um, no. Uh, and a lot of the other translations actually use the English as the base. Now the 35 translations that Navjivan has published, and given the way Navjivan does not record things, uh, it does not always mention which edition has been used to translate, whether they've used it from English. But I, I suspect in a lot of instances, either the Hindustani would have been, or the Hindi would have been used, or a combination of Hindi and English would have been used. I can, I, I know that this, that we are given to doing this, because um, um, he, he was somebody who warned us, he was the one who pointed it out, while we were doing Hinswaraj, was that the Hinswaraj text in Hindi, the Amrutlal Naramati text, sometimes relied upon the Gujarati, and sometimes upon English. Right? So, the man was reading two texts and translating and making one in, 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 in Hindustani. So, I, I suspect some such things have happened. All the foreign language translations, I am told, are from, from Mahadev. In many instances, they do mention that it is based on Mahadev Desai's translation. Um, but I am very disappointed with Hindustani. Very. <coughs> Uh, no, and none of them had direct access to Gandhi, uh, because uh, Kashina Trivedi, of course, knew Gandhi, but the translation happens after Gandhi is gone. I'm, uh, when, when the, I'm particularly interested in the Poddha, sorry, I'm particularly interested in the Mahavir uh, <coughs> uh, uh, translation. Um, and when does it take place? Um, because you know, not only is Odar very you know, uh, uh, involved in trade. I mean, he's a he's a sugar and good artery operating between 
Gorakhpur and and Kanpur uh, and and Calcutta. Mm. But you know, after reading Akshay Mukul's yes. work on the Gita Press, mm. I was just you know, which, which tells us so much about Poddar in so many different ways. I was just interested uh, it, whether you know where, where, as they say in English. Where is Podak coming from? Where is Podak coming from? I am not so certain, and I need to do more work. Um, um, I need to do more work on that. Um, but um, uh, it's, and I am also, um, I am also not sure. I am also not sure whether Podar's translation is the same that the one which appeared in the Hindi Young India. Yeah. Because, uh, the, you know, uh, as you know, um, Navjivan gets published in Gujarati, Young Indian in English. There are times when Harijan is published as Harijan Bandhu in Hindi. Similarly, Young India and Navjivan were sometimes periodically published in Hindi. Not, not throughout, but happens. Part of the autobiography is also published in the Hindi Patrika. Now, we don't know whether... It is Poddar's translation. I'll have to sit down, or somebody will have to sit down and, and really check uh, that. But Poddar's translation happens uh, soon after the English. Which is? Which is 1927 is the first volume. Poddar's translation is also available to us. The first parts begin to appear by 1927-1928. So it's almost simultaneous. And nobody who translates... Uh, this text, when Gandhi is very much there, gets into a correspondence with Gandhi. No, uh, or uh, takes permission. Or no, the permission was clearly sought. Yes. Permission would have been sought, but I haven't been able to. I mean, I haven't come across any correspondence about the Hindi rights, or the you know um, uh, because I've gone through the correspondence around the rights of the autobiography in uh, of, of people wanting to republish it even in English, uh, you know, the American journal Unity wanting to do that and all of that. But there is no correspondence about the Hindi translation, nor are there comments in Gandhi's writings about the Hindi translation, mm -hmm. nor are there references to the Hindi translation <coughs> in his correspondence with Puddhar. Perhaps in Poddha's papers. Which yes, which is, which is, yeah. I mean, by Atme Mavin Prasad Poddha, Armandas Poddha. Oh, sorry, sorry. He was Armandas Poddha. Yeah. This is Mavin Prasad Poddha. Sorry, thanks. Please. Wasn't Mate Bhai's English translation approved by Gandhiji? Um, I think it was not only approved, um, I think they dis even discussed it while the act of translation was taking place. So the word Robinson Crusoe was approved? I mean, I don't know, right? I don't, I mean, I'm, sorry, I'm saying, um, um, did, Gandhi, uh, did Gandhi see every line? We don't know. Uh, we know that some discussions took place, right? And even if Gandhi approved, he made a bad choice. I mean, I mean, uh, we we know that you know. I mean, and Gandhi is given to making um, bad judgment calls. Um, um, but yeah, I think there was discussion. But I don't think the discussion was about. I don't necessarily think that um, every every installment went to Gandhi because the originals which we have. Because um, and I'm saying this because uh, after many decades. Uh, we were, um, these things happen, and um, we found certain chapters, not the complete manuscript, but 27 chapters of Mahadev's translation um, in Mahadev's hand um, from certain files. Uh, and certain kinds of facsimiles I've, we've placed as evidence in, in that. In not one of those pages is there a mark by Gandhi, which tells me that otherwise, if, 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 if Gandhi had seen, there is no way Gandhi wouldn't have marked it. If, if nothing else, he would have written Bapu at the, at the bottom um, um, to say, you know, authenticated kind of thing. No marks on it. There are marks on it by Mira. It's clearly unmistakable Mira's hand uh, at some, some places. Apart from Mahadev and Mira, there is no other mark on those 27 chapters. 
Um, so that tells me that uh, although there would have been close dis collaboration, discussion, um, it would not necessarily would have gone through that kind of close reading in every instance. Sakshatkar, and, and, and you were right, I mean, this comes from the prayer, right? Um, um, uh, it is Sakshatkar. Uh, but what is the Sakshatkar which we then, Gandhi would then, much later, he would, he would allude to the kind of Sakshatkar that he wants, which is to say, I am thinking of the Sakshatkar in the Upanishadic term, where I am able to lift the lead that hides the golden orb, the Shavasya. Right? So it's it's in that sense. So to have a glimpse of the truth. Right? Uh, uh, but of course, um, uh, the the English rendering uh, comes from from the source that you you said. Yeah. The second thing in this uh, this beautiful presentation, how do you hermeneutically see something as a text? As object of interpretation. Father, um, you now, know, yeah. I see this uh, this space which is very creative. I mean, it's also uh, there's ambiguity, but very very creative. And can you link that with the so-called Sanskritic tradition called Abolishaya? I mean, all the Sruti is Abolishaya, there's no particular person as such. So, so a mix of multiple interpretations, you know. And the interpretation is true. It is true in a sense, contextually. <coughs> And, uh, the See, uh, let me let me answer that not flippantly but truly. M more often than not, I fall between two texts. Okay. Um, um, I, I you know um, <laughs> I remember Saib in this very room asking me. Um, so you think the English in Swaraj is the original, right? And that was a very serious question about about textual fidelity and and, and all kinds of things. So um, um, I sometimes I could not sometimes quite often fall between two texts. Um, but as I said, my preferred text is the English text. Um, that I, I I made very clear. <coughs> um, but I've I've I've. I've learned to do this um, is that you know um, the collected works are a great teaching manual uh, because at the bottom of each entry it tells you in which language it was originally written right? um, so v one then begins to acquire the discipline or the habit if no longer a discipline it's just a bad mm -hmm. habit is to say oh this was written in Gujarati so you read it in Gujarati uh, this was written in Hindi, you read it in Hindi. Uh, and so you, you, you begin to move between three texts. So my way of reading Gandhi has been, uh, well, my want is to be able to read him in the original. Um, um, and of course, I largely use the English translations or collected works when I write in English. I don't necessarily then uh, underwrite, unless there is a large... Uh, issue with translation. Excuse me, you are coming to your third question. Yeah. yeah. But uh, see, this raises a serious problem. Mm -hmm. which, which is the original text? Mm. The Gujarati one or the English one? Mm. 
can you clearly say that this is what Gandhi meant to be the original text, which not necessarily chronologically, mm. yeah. substantively what Gandhi thought was his original text. The original text in this case is the Gujarati text. Which gives you less light. Yes. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. 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 The third question is uh, very subtle. I remember I listened to a lecture in Shimla. <coughs> the conference from God, not now what I didn't know when he's organized. I answered this question. But I like to throw this. Interesting that uh, Gandhi wanted to give a, a lecture on someone on the mouth. And in that, is Gandhiji deconstructing the notion of Adhikara Bheda? Like uh, Ramakrishna, I can say that, you know. That Adhikara is that distinction based on, the, which is very true in Sastric traditions, that he is deconstructing. He is able to read the Christian scripture as a disciple of Jesus. Yeah. Is it that? Is that? Yeah. Absolutely. And he writes that. He writes that. He says um, that, that when, when you make a charge against me that I am a Christian, in secret, not closet, in secret. Um, it's both a libel and a merit. It's libel because you think that I'm capable of hiding truth or light when I find it. But it's also a merit because you think that though a Hindu, I have the capacity to access the beauty of that life. He says that. Um, um, and, and, and so, yes, so the answer to that is, this is what he hopes to do. Um, I don't know whether he sees that as an Adhikara Bheda. I think he thinks that everyone, certainly he, has a right to enter any tradition, uh, any text, make it his own. And then he does that with, <coughs> I mean, through the, I mean, because we, we know that he's thinking about, about the life of Jesus. Because repeatedly during those lectures on the Bhagavad Gita, his referent is Jesus. And I mean, he is talking about what is a yogi. He is explaining to the Ashramites what is it to be a yogi. And he fails. So finally he says, a perfect yogi is the way Jesus lived and died. <coughs> Which tells me that Jesus and the serpent is very much occupying. And this is, no, I mean, this is just giving you one instance. But if you read those 282 discourses, um, the passions of Christ come up in the most unexpected ways. that happens. So it's during that period, um, although he's not lecturing on the sermon, he's clearly engaging with it in, 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 in a very different way. Because at no point, see Gandhi, Gandhi does, you know, <coughs> in those lectures, not otherwise, in those lectures he does not cite exemplars in those lectures. Otherwise he is given to citing exemplars. Pralhad ne ye kiya, aap karo. Sita Mata ne ye kiya, aap karo. I mean he, he, he gives sermons through the idea of the exemplars. But in those lectures I haven't come across the exemplars being invoked in that way. The, the only substantial thing that happens is with Jesus. So he, I, I, so I would, I don't know whether it's Adhikar Bheda or not, but clearly the text that he, I mean, he is completely um, besotted. Right. Any more questions or comments? Yep. So, um, 
it's during the sabbatical time that Gandhi wrote uh, his autobiography. And at that time also he wrote uh, Anasakti Yoga and the translation to Gita mm -hmm. as well. Uh, do you see any connection between the two texts? Yes. Okay. Which which um, which which is something that I've you know I've, I've written um, at some length in the introduction uh, of the uh, of the critical edition, but um, um, uh, to to summarize that uh, I think what's what's I, I call these I I call this process the process of indwelling uh, uh, because he says that I needed to to dwell within myself right uh, and what are the forms in which you dwell within yourself. One of the forms that he dwelt within himself was to think about and, and engage very seriously with the texts that he thought were his moral compass. And he calls the Gita a moral dictionary. Um, I mean, that's the dictionary is the term that he uses. The, the compass is not the term. And so he does. And so the. Um, 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 but if you were to try and say, oh. <coughs> here is the Gita coming in or here is the autobiography coming in his interpretations no that is not what you would find but as part of his self practice to 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 have access to his Antaryami uh, one of the things that happens is the meditation on the Gita uh, and we know that even before Gandhi began his meditation or lectures on the Gita uh, um, Gandhi's act of the, the autobiographical act began with Vinoba like starting the lectures on the Gita at the ashram, uh, which uh, then uh, as um, and, and in the in the ashramic tradition, Vinoba was considered, or even otherwise in the tr uh, the modern tradition of interpretation of the Gita, <coughs> Vinoba is seen as a very major <coughs> referent. So um, it began with Vinoba's lectures, and then Gandhi felt that he needed to do it himself. An act of listening was not enough. So that happens. Sorry to have it so late. Uh, I was uh, struck with something like a paradox that the translation has made Gandhi more Christian, more colonial, and more English, uh, which is a bit strange. Uh, and I liked it more than the original Gujarati. Hmm. Um, now, it looks to me uh, we, uh, we can almost consider the autobiography from what I've heard today, uh, as a product of a joint authorship, Gandhi and Mahadev, almost. So deeply involved is Mahadev in it, and so much is Gandhi represented by that English, <coughs> which Gandhi has authorized also, obviously, in mm -hmm. so many ways. Uh, and if he can allow expressions like civilized to become English, uh, which gives us such a different spin, uh, it's uh, <coughs> remarkable that it should have been allowed, and that uh, they said thought it was appropriate to do so. Uh, this is what strikes me even more, uh, and why he should think of doing so, and how it has finally become a joint author in some sense. Mm. No, it's it's it's. Um Let me be honest about something. Well, I've been honest throughout, but let me be even more honest. Um, you know, my my partiality to the English text um, is also because my great great um, deep fondness for Mate. Uh, okay, um, of the ashram people. My point. Yeah, it is some of yeah, of the ashramic lot. Um, the only person that I'm fond of, really, is Mahadev. Of the entire Jing Bang that was around Gandhi. Um, increasingly Manu, but Mahadev. So partly it is it is that. But partly it also is the quality of the prose. Um, I'm, I'm not, I mean, I, having, you know, having made these some 1400 annotations on the translation both ways, um, I've thought about each word, checked commas, checked editions, uh, and I still have come away feeling uh, enlightened from that text. That is true. Now, 
the questions that you raise about it are there. Um, um, but I'm I uh, a part of my relationship with both Mahadev and the text is a happy relationship, um, not too problematic. Um, I I I do I I mark these things, um, mark these I think um, to say that you know there's something happening here, uh, not at <coughs> I hope I hope I hope I I I do hope that. I hope that not once in these 1400 annotations have I said, ah, I caught you. I, I hope I haven't done that. I mean, that was not the intent. And if, if, if uh, I would be very hurt if that's something which emerges from somebody reading, said, I'm, I'm, I'm pointing, um, I'm saying to, to Mahadev, uh, I can sit on your shoulders and look far. No, I don't think that's what I wanted to do. But it's true, it's true that uh, um, Mahadev's English or the English of the autobiography is, is at a different register altogether. It's also not the kind of English that Mahadev wrote otherwise, right? Because we have examples of Mahadev's English writings. I mean, he was a prolific writer in English of letters, essays, other things. Um, and uh, the the English of the autobiography is uh, has the kind of depth that his other writings in English don't have. He is a master writer. I mean, his Gujarati prose is that of a great craftsperson, chiseled, superbly done. Uh, but even his Gujarati doesn't soar the way sometimes the English soars. <coughs> Uh, that's 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 my sense. So uh, I think this um, 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 it's it's a completely different sense that I get when I read uh, um, Mahadev's uh, translation. Yeah. You give me a religious feeling. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. There are so many texts in so many religions where God has spoken directly, and we have the version that has come from the human hand. Uh, <coughs> and I get that feeling here. I, I, if that's what comes through, I'm, I'm, that's not intended. Um, um, no, but I, I, I'm very, very fond of Madhav. I mean, no, no taking away that. Um, um, I am. Um, sometimes I'm fonder of him than of M K G. But really, at yeah. this point, don't you have to bring in Srinivas Shastri? But, well, what Srinivas Shastri does no, is... Because when you talk of English... Of course. Yeah, so yeah then, uh, you know, the historian reminds you. Um, uh, 1939, uh, 1933 is when Mahadev sends the translations, both the volumes of Srinivas Shastri. Um, and Srinivas Shastri uh, begins to, to read this. Uh, and... Um, Fortunately, we have that edition that he read and corrected. Uh, so we know every correction that he uh, um, suggested. Um, several years ago, um, I, when I was even more unemployed, I actually calculated and created a table saying, he says, put a comma here, Madhav puts a comma, he says, put a semicolon here, Madhav says, no, I'm not putting a semicolon. So kind of a concordance between what had happened. So I've done that. He suggested about... 2,282 changes <coughs> through through these two volumes, um, and and since uh, those volumes exist in the Ashram Library, I, I was able to do that some ten years ago. What uh, what's striking there is that with all his facility, Mahadev, like a good Gujarati, has no sense of English punctuation. So, 95% of changes that are made or suggested by Srinivas Shastri, which then are incorporated in the revised edition, are about punctuation. At one point, he is so fed up with Mahadev that he starts recommending the books on grammar that he ought to read now. Um, 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 huh? well, yeah, and, 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 and more, right? I mean, but that he, he ought to have had. And then he suggests that these are the newspapers that you should read, garden included. 
So yes, I mean I think in terms of in terms of the technical pros that or, or the technical finesse that we find in the 1940 edition, the revised edition, uh, owes to uh, Shriva Shastri's great act of correcting Mahadev's punctuations. But very interestingly, every time he suggested a change in phrase, uh, we know that at two instances he suggested a substantive change in phrase. In both instances, MKG put actually a blue editor's pencil and says, the original remains. So, his changes in selection of words or phrases were usually rejected by MKG, while all the other changes, which are technical in nature, of which to do with the, the experience of reading, definitely, and experience of writing, are accepted. Thank you. Yeah, please. Uh, I'd like to hear your comments on, in the English version, I think the only Hindi word user, Nirmal K. was wrong. Why, why just that, or is there some special significance? No, I, I, <coughs> I think. <coughs> <coughs> Thank you. 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 Uh, mm. um, so you're right, and I I don't have an answer which is. Um, which is intelligent, <laughs> or even intelligible. I think, but it's a very beautiful, very beautiful uh, phrase, and both Mahadev and 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 Gandhiji wanted to retain it. So, so friends, <coughs> Sanjeev wants an important announcement to be made. The next lecture in this series will be by philosopher and eminent Gandhi scholar Vineet Haksar, <coughs> and he'll be speaking on Satyagra and the conquest of evil on 20th February, please do come and Tridip, how do we thank you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jishni, they're going home with you. Thank <laughs> 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 <laughs>